Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, literally came in roaring this weekend during the Easter holiday, grossing over 80 million domestically. Which, if you told me a few weeks ago that Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, was not only going to be the biggest box office sensation uh, of Easter, but also be really just new life into this franchise, I would have been shocked. I really didn't think Godzilla X Kong the new empire was going to perform this well. I thought this franchise was kind of on uh, faded grounds. I really thought that Godzilla X Kong was going to underperform shows how much I know, but I'm not talking really about the box office of Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. I'm here to review Godzilla X Kong, the new empire. How many times have I said Godzilla X Kong, the new empire in this one minute review thus far, but this film is once again directed by Adam Wingard. He directed uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, which came out in 2021. That was the first movie that I saw post the pandemic. That was the first movie that I literally returned to in a movie theater to see. Uh, so that has a special place. Uh, but yeah, so Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. Is there really a plot to describe of this movie? I'll do a little bit of it, I guess. So basically, after you know the events of Godzilla vs. Uh, Kong, where they defeat Mega Godzilla. Kong goes back to his territory. Godzilla's on his territory. They stay apart. They're not really ever meeting. Something happens in this hollow world, I believe, as they call it, which is where Kong lives and this new threat arises. And Kong essentially goes and investigates. And they start realizing that there's this threat that is going to require all the strength of all the Titans to come together and defeat this new threat. And of course, if you've seen the trailers, everyone knows it. This does end with Godzilla and Kong having to reunite and team up to once again beat the villain. Godzilla X Kong, the new empire stars, Rebecca Hall, Brian Tyree Henry, uh, reprising the roles from the previous movie and has Dan Stevens in this movie as well. Extremely talented cast for Godzilla X Kong. Uh, extremely talented cast being asked to do very little with their roles. I mean, these characters are barely fleshed out. I think what Godzilla does, or Godzilla X Kong, I should say, I'm going to have to keep saying it, Godzilla X Kong does very right with aspects of these characterizations is it just kind of allows Brian Tyree Henry to just be naturally funny. And that is enough of a characterization where I'm just like, okay, I'm on board at the very least. I'm not annoyed by his character. Even if I have no understanding or feel of who this guy is, at least I like watching Brian Tyree Henry on the screen. And that was very much true with Dan Stevens, uh, who plays Trapper in this movie. He has this past with the Rebecca Hall character and there is just enough charisma in his performance and machismo that I was like, okay, I get it. Like, I get what this character is trying to essentially be a replica of, of other movies. Like, there are very, there are, you see his character in this movie is what I'm trying to say. And you're like, oh, that harkens back to this previous character, maybe in Jurassic Park, or maybe it's in this other movie. And you understand that that's the tone that he's trying to hit. And does it give him any real characterization besides that? No, but he's charismatic enough that I was like, okay, I like vibing with Dan Stevens in this movie. And honestly, that was kind of enough because I, that has been always my biggest complaints with these MonsterVerse movies. The monsters are awesome and the fights are cool, but they spend so much time with these human characters that by the time Godzilla and Kong start fighting each other, I just don't really care. And in this case, one, they do a few things right. Kong is really the central character of this movie. It, it, uh, it focuses too much on Rebecca Hall and her daughter character still. Like that is still the fundamental problem with Godzilla x Kong. But King Kong definitely has a much bigger role in this movie. And the King Kong stuff of this movie works really well as he's discovering basically this other species of him out there. And that's exciting and the way they characterize God's, uh, sorry, King Kong in these movies works. And then Godzilla is just Godzilla. He's this big monster going to destroy, wreak havoc. I kind of described it as he's on a side quest this entire movie where he realizes the big boss is coming up 
So he's just going from place to place, absorbing energy and just getting ready. And that's really his role in this movie. But yeah, when Godzilla destroys a nuclear plant to suck up its uh, nuclear energy to get ready for the final boss, it's awesome. Like, what else am I supposed to say? I'm a man of simple pleasure, and seeing Godzilla blow nuclear blasts is all I really need in a movie. And this movie gives enough of it at an hour and 55 minutes. Like, it's just enough of that constantly that I was into it. And I mean, it really is just like the appeal of this movie is just seeing Godzilla and King Kong wreck shop. And specifically when they're in the real world, like when you see Godzilla wrecking the Colosseum or just going through other landmarks or when they're in uh, Egypt and seeing the pyramids, like that's the fun of it where you're just like, oh, this is like so over the top explosive. Like it's kind of that same Roman Emmerich style of Independence Day where it's like, oh, that's the White House being destroyed. In this case, it's like, oh, that's the Colosseum. Like this is beautiful Italy landscapes being destroyed by Godzilla and King Kong just, you know, having a moment. Uh, When they go into like this hollow world, which is again where King Kong reigns and is from, like, that's when the movie has some structural issues. I think the biggest one being is now that it is no longer the real world, it becomes very clearly an imagination of CGI. And with that, the CGI is very noticeable and it doesn't give the scope of Godzilla versus Kong. So you're in this and you don't really feel the destruction or scope. It just kind of feels weightless in a lot of these uh, sequences, which has issues throughout because you you don't have any size or comparison so when you're seeing all these kongs like next to each other and fighting you're like oh okay like it kind of feels like planet of the apes or it just feels like they're regular size apes and maybe that gives a more human approach to aspects of that story and i actually certainly felt for king kong in moments of this film but it does lose the scope and the scope is the most fun part of Godzilla X Kong. So that is an issue inherent to the story, this weightlessness of the CGI. They actually do a good technique in the third act to combat that, but it is something that I noticed throughout the entire runtime where I'm just like, I don't really have a scale or size of these, and the human characters aren't there near them in certain scenes. So you're just like, these are just two CGI monsters fighting in a jungle. And that's the most I could get out of it. And again, that's exciting, but it also doesn't give any depth of feel to this world. That I think that's a big issue that Adam Wingard has in uh, his Godzilla X Kong, which is just that there is no depth of feel. You are just in this world and it doesn't feel real. And obviously it's a fictional world. Like I totally get it, but it just, it doesn't have anything that feels tangible. And that's a real struggle for this movie. But ultimately, Godzilla and Kong fight, and there's a lover boy needle drop that's going on as they're fighting the big bad. Like, that's all I really need in a movie. Like, at some point, I'm just like, am I over critiquing this movie? Because I had to use the restroom twice during this movie. And each time I was running because I'm like, well, I know for a fact Godzilla and Kong are about to meet up right here. Like, I have to be sitting here at that moment when this happens, like that is so important to me to be there and with this crowd and just having this experience that like, I have to be there. Like, and that's what this movie works at where I'm just like, okay, like I don't care about the story, if you will say of the human characters, they are filler to get to the monster fighting, but the monster fighting works so well in this movie. And I found it to be far more frequent in this movie than it is in other movies. Uh, other previous movies, I should say, that even if I have issues with some of the ways that shot, even if I have issues with some of the CGI, it's still awesome to see King Kong just grab a baby Kong and use him as a club and start beating other smaller King Kongs up. Like, again, man of simple pleasure. I get it. I like that. I like, I see that on screen. I'm like, that's great. That's all I ever really want in a movie. And Godzilla X Kong, the new empire delivers uh, with that. I will say with the human characters, they are in service to this movie to bring back another Titan. And it's really silly how they get there. And they definitely could have cut a lot of this. I think this movie could have easily been max 100 minutes. But it all 
gets to a place where it's just like, oh, now we have another legendary Titan in this basically battleground arena. And yeah, I, I'm glad that that Titan was there in that moment. I'm like, okay, that just makes this all the much cooler. And that's really my thoughts on Godzilla XCOM. I was curious because when Godzilla minus one came out and people were really praising the story of that movie and the human connections we had with those characters, which I totally agree with, I had this thought process of, is this going to hurt Godzilla X Kong, the new empire? Because like now we see what Godzilla can do and we can also see the emotional maturity that a Godzilla movie is capable of and that these monster verse movies have been largely lacking. Are people now going to see him be like kind of burned out where they're just like, well, we don't want this type of movie. The box office clearly shows uh, that I am wrong and that this franchise is actually ever growing. It seems like I think this is the second highest gross uh, they've ever had. And I will fully admit, I like this movie more than I liked most of the other ones. I think this movie, there's now five movies in the MonsterVerse uh, universe. There's Godzilla from 2014, which I still will contend it's the best. And I, it's not a great movie, but the Godzilla moments will always stand out in my mind. Uh, Kong Skull Island is a movie that I defended, but it's not particularly great. It has some fun elements in it. Uh, I'm not a fan of Godzilla 2. And Godzilla vs. Kong, like, it's, it's Godzilla vs. Kong fighting. Like, at some point, I was just into the movie, even if I had issues that I'm probably uh, relaying on to this movie as well. Uh, Godzilla X Kong, I think by default is probably the second best uh, of these monster verse movies. I had a lot of fun watching this movie and I can recommend it. It's certainly to be seen in a theater. And I really need to stress this because you see by my Blu-ray collection right behind me, like I own a lot of movies and I don't own any of these monster verse movies. Like I just don't see the point of owning these movies because I only want to see them in theaters. Uh, the reason I can't really talk about these other films in great depth is because I haven't watched them since I saw them in theaters. There is no rewatchability of these movies unless I'm in a movie theater. Like, I can't just see myself firing on Godzilla X Kong The New Empire at home on my 65 inch TV. It's just nowhere near as satisfying. But being in the theater, hearing the seats rumbling, like, yeah, that's where the fun of this is. So it's a very theatrical experience that I enjoy with these movies and you can call that guilty pleasure you can criticize that as a lack of an art form i consider it fun and that's what this movie is to me so i can recommend godzilla x kong the new empire to you and with that said i am going to be nice and i am going to give this movie three out of five stars because i understand the flaws i understand my own criticisms of it but i had fun with this movie and this was all i needed this movie to be it was a great way to spend my Easter morning and I have no regrets doing so. It was a great way to spend my Easter morning and I hope everyone has the same fun and enjoyment I had while watching Godzilla, X-Kong, The New Empire, and I hope to see more.